folks, it's Fridgar here. How you doing? Welcome back to Boulder Canyon here in Farming Simulator 19. I am just finishing up our first round around the outside of this field. Right there. And I'll do a little bit across the top and then we will refill the fertilizer and then we can get the hired help doing most of the rest. We do just need to go around the bottom edge of the field. And I've missed a tiny strip there. The problem is, when you turn even the slightest bit towards the edge of the field to correct a little bit that you're missing, it always ends up missing more, doesn't it? Because of the way the spread is on the fertilizer, you always end up missing that little bit extra on top of it. Which is slightly frustrating, to say the least, but uh, hey-ho, that's the way things go. Uh, let's lower that bad boy down there and open it up and then reload it with fertilizer again and do that and we're off once more. Now we should have enough money to be able to do the fertilizer. I don't know that we're going to have enough money to do the seed on this field. We want to plant soybeans on here next. So I'm hoping that by the morning, something will be able to be sold, be it wool or grain or something else. Now, I was asking you all last week what you thought about the grain and what you thought I should be doing in regards to selling grain. Because I suggested getting a 45,000 litre trailer and only selling grain in lots of 45,000 litres. Now, a number of you have commented on this, and you have said that the particular trailer that I mentioned using wouldn't be a suitable trailer for um, what I got in mind. It, 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 it definitely wouldn't be a suitable trailer for what I've got in mind. Um, I'm just going to go and have a look at this one quickly. Actually, I'll tell you what, before I go and look at that, let's just do this. Right, I did only do up the one side, so in theory now, if I bring this over here, I know that I've got some work that I want to do down the side of this field, but we can stick a layer of fertilizer across the whole field, and that's going to be fine. So if I put that one going down across the field, that will work, and then we can talk while that one works. That's a much better way of doing this, isn't it? Um, right, trailers. I said about getting this trailer right here, if I can find it, that one, $35,000 that will cost us, and it's 45,000 litres. Now, the only real reason for buying that trailer is so that we can measure out a quantity and use that with the, um, for selling grain. That would be the only reason. We wouldn't be able to use that one for the combine anyway because it would be too high. It, it wouldn't fit over the combine. So that one wouldn't be an option for the combine. The only thing that would be used for is to measure out a quantity of grain so that we can sell it. And my theory was that a lorry coming up from the lowlands would have a couple of trailers on like that. I mean, it wouldn't necessarily be like that. Some people did point out that if it was just those trailers, there wouldn't be any traction on the truck and it wouldn't work, um, you, you, you wouldn't be doing that. You wouldn't be driving up into the hills with a, you know, a couple of trailers like that. Um, most places in the US wouldn't have a road train style anyway. Um, so the general feeling was that this might not necessarily be very accurate uh, for that trailer. But my, what, what I was kind of thinking is that perhaps the truck would turn up with, where are we? Uh, something like that one or something like the pace setter and would be able to take uh, two lots. So, I, and I don't know if they come bigger than a 60,000 litre capacity. There is another one down over here somewhere. Uh, that one is, oh, well, that one's still got a 60,000 litre capacity. I don't know if it's got an option. No, it doesn't have an options. Um, but we can have a look at it anyway. What I was thinking is that maybe, because this has got like two bottoms on it there, so I don't know if you get trucks like this that have got separate compartments so that you could have one there with one type of grain, one there with another type of grain, and you'd go along and you would fill each one up. But we could say if the total capacity was 90,000 litres rather than 60, you could put 45,000 litres into each side. The general consensus seems to be, though... 
Now, I don't think I've got a mod here for a B... Is it a, a B... Not a B train. A, um, is it a B train? I'm not actually sure what you call it. General consensus, though, seems to be that it would be something like one of these in the US. It would be like that, or it would be the, the B train type configuration where this one's got like a, a turntable bit on the back, and you have another trailer on there, and both trailers... I don't know if they're the same size or if they'd be a little bit smaller um, than, say, 56,000. So I'm sort of thinking, w would they be 45,000 litres each? So this trailer, as it would only be used for measuring, and this is what someone else said, is why don't I have the shop own this one? So we're not paying for it. I mean, if I look in here, the initial, the leasing cost per day is $350. That's not very much, and I was kind of thinking that that $350 would sort of be, uh, if I was to just go and do the lease, I can add some money in, um, that would be, uh, um, again, it'd be a bit like the shop owning it, and then we would be able to use it, and we'd be able to tip the stuff out whenever we, we'd be, that's, that's how we'd be able to do it. The shop would own it, and... Um, you know, we'd have a leasing cost on there per day. We wouldn't be using very much in a way of operating hours because the only thing that we would actually use it for is to go load stuff up from our storage tank and then take it over beside the red barn to the sell point and sell. So it would, it, it's essentially, it would be there. We would just use it to measure stuff out. So it's, it's not actually kind of part of it. The $350 per day that would come from the shop would be for something different. I mean, I could change that round and not have it leased at all. We could, I could just add the money in for next episode and then um, buy it. So I might... I, I, I'm, I'm thinking I'll probably do something like that. Um, so 45,000 litres. you got that one there. It says 56,000. So if that was a 45,000 litre trailer, a little bit shorter, and then it had another such a trailer on the back... Um, that were, is, it, is it a B train? I, I'm, I'm not quite sure. What, I can't remember what they're called now. B trailer, B, B something. Um, but if you had two of those side by side, then yeah. Some people said that certainly in Canada and the more remote areas, it wouldn't be unheard of for a transport company to go and get a half a load. Um, it's that competitive a business, transporting grains and stuff, that going off and getting a half a load in one go certainly wouldn't be an unrealistic thing. So if I was, I mean, maybe I'm, I'm still liking the idea personally of saying a minimum sell quantity of 45,000 litres, which is again why I want to have that one. Um, but if we've got that minimum quantity and then we've got something extra, say a minimum of an extra 15,000, we could sell the extra 15,000 um, in order to sort of be the next part of the load. Because apparently there are plenty of companies that would be willing to go and get a full load and then a part trailer on the second one, um, that that wouldn't be an issue. So um, this this is kind of the sort of things that I'm thinking along. Um, let me know your thoughts, but it's gonna I'm going to have to sort of finish up this week's recordings before I start to get feedback on this. So I'm thinking we'll go for this. If I get a lot of feedback that you really don't like this idea, because I'm not saying that this trailer here would be the one that would be turning up. It would be one more similar to this, but the, is it the B train? I think it's B train. Now, this is going to really bug me now. Um, wait a minute. I, I got to look this up. All right. It is B train, apparently, up to 27.5 meters long. I don't know about quantities, but I do think that looking at the pictures of the various different trucks, um, something like that, but with a capacity of 45,000 litres, wouldn't be far off. So I think I might be on the right track with having this one right here. And this is the one that we'll use to measure out the stuff. Um, so I'm going to actually lease that one now. I will add in a little bit of money. Um, I will probably add in the leasing cost that I'm going to have right there, plus 35,000, and I will buy that. So I'll lease it for now. So we're not actually leasing it, it's the shop that's doing it. I will correct the money for next episode. So I will change that. I will I will add in 
Um, well, we'll add that, plus we've got to move it. So we're looking at uh, initial leasing costs. I'll add in $37,000 and then have that as a purchase and the shop will own it. We've got things that the shop owns already. And this is going to be another one of those things. The shop owns it. It's not us that owns it. And the only thing we're using it for back here is to just measure out quantities of grain. There is no other reason that we're using it. We're not going to use it on the farm. It's not going to be used like that. It is simply so we can measure things out so that we know how much we are uh, actually moving around at any one time. Right, the great... That one's still way down. That's not changed. The silage is dropping, so I need to... Drop that down. I haven't kept an eye on the silage. But 295 is alright. I don't want to wait for absolute ages for that to come back up again. So I'm just going to leave it. Straw is coming up. So we're going to let that one just finish off doing its fertilizer in the field. It hasn't got a great deal left to go and do. And I want this tractor over here. I'm going to leave that one there a second. And we're just going to go straight over here. We're going to get these silage bales. We're going to load them up. We're going to sell them. It's not a great deal to go and do, to go and sell these silage bales. What else is coming up for sale? We've got that right there. The wool is at the bottom at the moment, so that'll be, to, well, hopefully tomorrow, that'll be all right. Um, that price there, we'll keep an eye on this one. We'll see how high this goes, because that'll give us an indication of what this could potentially go up to. So we'll have to see about that. Now, let's get this trailer hooked on. Let's have some lights, shall we? There we go. Lit up like a Christmas tree. That's much better. There, we have that one on there, and we start the auto, no, no, auto load. Right, there, we get that one onto there, and then we can, hang on, I need to do that, and then turn that round like that, so that I can load the rest of these. I need to do that once more a little bit, like that. Just want to get it... There we go. Right. Just want to get it close enough to get those bales loaded onto there. And I'm going to lo unload it onto the trailer, and I'm going to do that. Just so that we can see that we've got the straps in place. And 295 per 1,000 litres. So we have had slightly better than this. Not a huge amount. It's, it's not like the, the end of the world or anything. Um... With the prices that we're getting, I'm just loading it back on for a minute because it's just easier if I do it like this. And then I bring it over to there like that and go boom. There we go. $56,705. That gives us a total of $62,000. That is not enough yet to go and buy the new sheep pen. We need $180,000 to be able to buy that one. So that's why I'd like to be able to sell the grain. Selling the grain is a very, very important thing. I'm not going to bother strapping this one down. I'm just going to leave it like it is. I'm going to get over to here. And we're going to sell it. So there's those bales. The straw bales will be next. We will sell those soon, just not quite yet. And I bring that back over to there like that. And then... Oops. need to do that. I wanted to do that. And then unload. Right, there we go. So there's another $4,700 right there. So we've got $66,000. We will have a little bit overnight that we will lose. But that's not so bad. Helper G has now completed their task as well. So I bring that one. That one can just stop there a minute. We will go over to... Actually... I want to just go to here. There's our trailer. That's the shop-owned trailer. Now, I'm going to bring that one back, and we will have that one back here. We don't have a hitch on the back of there, so I'll have to get a tractor and drag that one back, but that's not going to be too difficult. Um, I'll get our own tractor. We'll do that in the morning. We'll bring that one back in the morning. So, um... Yeah, we'll, we'll have this one. We'll get this one over to the shop and we'll bring it back. We'll have to, we'll, we'll drive it over and we'll drive it back. So we're, we're using the, the truck, the one from the shop, which is not ideal, but you kind of, you kind of get the idea. I'm, I'm hoping that you, you understand what I'm trying to achieve with um, having that trailer. 
what I'm trying to sort of simulate, and I'm hoping that I'm getting it roughly right. So we say 45,000 litres for an initial load. And then beyond that, if we've got a B train that is coming up from the valleys to uh, coming all the way up here, to have that on five times speed. Um, if we've got a B train that is coming up from the valleys all the way up here, we'd say a 45,000 litre minimum load, and then uh, 15,000 litres minimum for... Actually, you know what? I'm going to leave that one there. I'm just going to dump that one right there for now. I'm not going to do anything else with it. 15,000 litres minimum to go towards a second load. That's what I'm going to say on this. I think that will work out all right. I'm hoping it will work out all right. We'll have to wait and see. Now, this one right here. I'm going to back up there and I'm going to load that one onto there. We've already fixed this one. I didn't fix the header on the combine. I fixed the um, the mower instead, and I completely forgot. I mean, I knew I was fixing the mower. I, several people pointed it out, but I, I did actually realize I was fixing the mower. But I did also completely forget to fix the header on the combine, because I forgot that the header is separate on the combine. With the small, old combines like that, um, some of them, they didn't used to be a separate header. You didn't take the header off. It just kind of stayed on it. And like that one over there that we got in our shed... It's small enough that it's easy to forget that the header does come off. And that's what I did. I forgot that the header came off and was separate. Um, and so I did actually forget to repair it. So I'll have to remember to do that before our next harvest. I probably will forget. But I'd like to try, I'd like to try and remember at least. I'd like to make a small amount of effort and at least try to remember. There is a lot of dirt right up there on that bit. You see? Rest of tractor looks like it's coming up clean, but that one there, I don't know. Maybe it's just not coming off of that bit. Let's go over here and see what we've got in the way of wool. I got a full one there. I got a full one there. I've got 1,800 litres there. I've got 3,000 litres there. I've got six. Th okay, so I've got three pallets worth right there. I can squeeze all up together. Three pallets is pretty good going, I'd say. Cleaning the 75%. I'm not going to worry about cleaning them up tonight. It's just about bedtime now anyway. 77 animals next to animal will be by morning. We'll have another animal in the morning. It's 78 animals. That gives us one day to get the sheep pen or get some animals sold. I would rather get the sheep pen. So we'll go up here. We'll get some sleep. Some much needed rest. We'll have an 11 hour break. All right. Morning has broken. I believe the blackbird may have spoken as well. We will go and hop into here. The sheep over here, not quite so clean. Water and food is fine. And an hour and a half and we will have our 78th sheep in the pen. Now, as far as the sheep go, I don't actually have plans to buy any more sheep when we get the bigger pen. I'm just going to leave them as they are, let them carry on. Uh, let them carry on reproducing. Uh, probably not a good idea to do that to my rake. Not necessarily going to sort of induce a, a, a long and healthy life for my rake if I go walloping the thing in that kind of fashion. So I've sold some stuff. I haven't sold all stuff and I have more stuff to sell. We've got straw to sell and we've got barley to sell. We've got quite a lot of barley, actually. We would like to be able to sell some of this barley. So that one is up at 686. Barley is going up. It's at 500. So I would say that if it goes above 600, we've got a reasonable price for barley. And for wheat, that goes all the way up to 686. I mean, yeah, above 650 would be best. But we'll see what it goes up to. And we'll use that. Wool is going up. Silage is currently from 2... Uh, from almost 300, it's now down to 95. Straw is on 69. It's not going to go any higher than that, but 69 is not too bad. I'm happy with 69. So we will take our $69 per thousand litres, and we will sell all of the straw that we currently own. We're not going to be buying cows or pigs just yet, so we don't actually need straw. 
The only thing that we're going to be getting is first a new sheep pen, and then after that we're getting a chicken pen, and we will be populating it with chickens. So, as I'd like to be able to get both chickens and um, sheep, and I'd like to sort of increase the numbers. Prob well, I say that we're not, I don't have plans at the moment to go and get more sheep, but... I'm not going to rule it out. If we were to seed in an extra 50 sheep, that might help us along a little bit. It's not necessarily a bad thing, is it? Just squeeze that back there a little bit. And then I can go like that and like that. I'm going to take these over and we will sell these. I will just stop time a second. Well, slow it right down to one. Just while we sell the straw. Over to there. I don't know why I bother doing the, the whole loading, unloading thing, just to bring it over to here. It's just that I like the weight on the trailer. It's, it's actually quite a cool thing, that the um, the, the weight that it does um, put onto the trailer. Um, and it also looks quite cool when everything's all strapped down as well. I like the appearance of it. Okay, so there is $13,370 from those bales. We've got another half a load over here as well that we can go and collect and sell. So, we're going to be pushing $20,000 just from the straw from this one harvest. Which I don't think is too bad, really. I think that's pretty reasonable. So there, exactly half a trailer. I'm just going to leave it like it is this time. Um, we'll put it like that. We'll go over. $20,000 from straw plus what we get for selling the barley. Now, I know that we've got two harvests worth for the barley, but still. Um, that's... Not a bad number either. There's another 6,600. We had 13,300. So, yes, we've got just over $20,000 for selling the straw. That's just the straw alone from that harvest, which is pretty good. You know, that the field that we got there, we got $20,000 for the straw from that. Plus, we had all the money that we got from selling the silage in the grass field. That was also pretty good. I'd say that overall, we've we've done quite nicely out of that. I've got nearly another full pallet of wool over there. So once the wool prices get back up, we'll use this trailer again, and we'll be able to make a small fortune out of that lot. That's got to go back up to regular speed. Now, that one's fine. One doesn't need to change. We've got that one to watch, currently 522. And we've also got the wool to keep an eye on as well. That is currently on 850. We will wait until both of them have gone up to maximum. And then we'll change them over. Now, I'm off to the shop to go and get the least trailer. However, I'm sort of thinking that we're not actually... I'm just wondering whether I want that one to be... Whether I should have even leased it in the first place. I probably should have waited. I mean, the reason I did it was because I wasn't entirely sure we'd be selling stuff before midnight and I wanted to make sure that I had the item there. So what I will most likely do is we'll get to the shop because this is going to take us the rest of the episode, I think. And once we get to... Well, actually, no, it won't. Okay, we'll get to the shop and we'll leave this tractor out the shop. We go back over to home and we'll finish putting away our machinery over there so that we're sort of ready to go. And... We don't need to worry about too much else. Have you noticed, as we go through here, we do get little lag spikes? I'm pretty sure it's because we're going close to some of those trees that sort of um, half exist and half don't. Those seem to be the ones that caused us the most problems when we were cutting stuff down in our field previously. And I reckon that's what we're doing. Whenever it you get a little lag spike, um, I can see it because I have a frame rate counter up in the corner of my screen. So I know when that happens. Um, but you should be able to see it. As you, I imagine that you do get like little bits of lag come up on the recording. Um, I reckon that's one of those weird trees that is just sort of coming up. And that's what's causing that. That's my theory, anyway. Um, no, we'll go back over and we'll put a few bits of machinery away and stuff like that. And then in our next episode, I will have returned the lease trailer. Because I shouldn't have bought it. And I will have bought it instead. I'll have added in the money to the save game and I will buy it on behalf of the shop so it will put everything back I'll put $37,000 in that will make us even and then that trailer will be owned by the shop the same as the case tractor and the truck and the trailer that are all at the shop as well so it'll be owned by the shop 
We won't use that tra- Ooh, steady, steady, steady. We're not going to use that trailer for anything other than measuring out grain. That's the only reason we're using it. And, um, because we're only, we're literally going to be moving grain from one side of the yard to the other. And you wouldn't normally need to go and buy a trailer for something like that. You know, if you're selling grain, you would just sell it straight out of your store, wouldn't you? You know, the, the person would arrive and they would take it straight out of your store and then it would be sold. Either that or you load it up and you cart it off to be sold. But loading it up in order to carry it from one side of your yard to the other, that's not a particularly realistic thing. So I think that having this trailer just to measure out a set quantity of grain and then um, have, you know, that's, that's, uh, that's basically the merchant turning up measuring out his grain and then he's he's taking it away and i think with the b trains the um the road b tra is it b trains b trailers what whatever they're called um i think that forty-five thousand liters per trailer on those would be reasonably accurate so if i said that and i said that we need a forty-five thousand liter minimum so that would be like one trailer on it. If we had 46,000 litres, we'd have to leave the 1,000 litres behind. We could we can measure out one trailer load and that'll be it. So I'm actually just going to leave him here. And I'm not going to do anything with that one for a minute. I'm going to go back over to the farm. Uh, like this. And we'll put our machinery away. I did already check that one, didn't I? Let's just double check. We can repair the tractor. And... Workshop tab. I love that workshop tab. We'll put this one away, and I could also do with putting the front loader on and just cleaning the sheep a little bit. So we might do that as well. Now, where did I put this one? I think I had this one in next to the seed drill, didn't I? So we'll do that. We'll put this one in next to the seed drill. Oh, no, I didn't. I had the fertilizer spreader in that in there. So this one was actually in here next to the mower. Can I actually get that one in next to the mower? I probably can. You can turn this remarkably sharp. It's trying to lean over an awful lot, isn't it? But there, you can turn it around like that. Why is it dancing around like that, I wonder? Uh, okay, that's not good. And because of the angle that I'm using there, that's also not good. So I'm going to want to... Oops. No, I'm going to want to go that way. Why is it dancing like that? Okay, I have no idea why it's doing that. But I am going to go over this way a little bit. And I'm going to straighten out so that it's going to be a little bit easier to finish backing that one in. And I'm hoping that will stop it dancing around from side to side as well. It's a very peculiar thing that it's doing quite sure why it's doing that it's probably something to do with the way that the wheels are turning that would be my guess uh but there we go we, we've got it reasonably straight so i'm, ju I'm just going to leave it there and think that that's a job reasonably well done and we're not going to tempt fate so next up i've got nothing much in particular at all actually okay uh, uh, I was looking for more... Oh, it's the trailer over there that we still got to put away. We won't worry about that one just for a minute. We'll go over here, we get the front loader on, and we'll tidy up the sheep. Um, I'll bring that one in there. So, yeah, a B train comes up, and it'll come up for 45,000 litres. You'd probably come up for 40,000 litres with the B train. Um, I mean, I don't think we should have him coming up for anything less than 40,000 litres. If we've got 45 and we've got an extra 15,000 for the second trailer, then yeah, that would probably be realistic from what people are saying. Um, and then I would... I personally would say that we could do that per load, per what we think would be a load on this uh, particular um, truck-trailer combination. But what I don't think we should do is I don't think that we should have uh, two full loads and then one at, say, 15,000 litres. Because that would entail the vehicle going away and then coming back just for 15,000 litres. It should be one third of a load, and that's all he's going to be able to get from us. And I'm not sure that, I, that that would sort of be enough. And yeah, I, I do hear what people are saying, the ones that said, you know, it's extremely competitive in places and... 
So going for a quarter of a load would be kind of realistic. But we're a lot, we're a particularly long way from anywhere else. And that's why I'm thinking that maybe a quarter of a load wouldn't be enough. So um, if we've got enough in our store right here, look, if we're doing it in 45,000 litre groups, we've got 133,000. So we can do two lots of 45 is going to be 90,000. So that's one trailer, that's one B train um, complete, no problems at all. Then another one is going to take that to 135,000 to be the first full trailer load. We're actually 2,000 litres short of a second load. Um, and that's the bit that I'm wondering about, is whether or not we should accept that. The, you know, whether we should say it's got to be a full load for the first one, or whether it's... I think I did say that we, you know, we, we could accept... Oops, I don't want to do that. Um, we could accept 40,000 litres, and this is what quite a few of you said, is that um, if you're looking at a 45,000 litre trailer, then anything above 40,000 litres would be pretty much a full load, so that would be acceptable. So that's what we would be doing there. If we were to sell all of the grain that we've got. I mean, I don't actually want to because I want to keep it back for chickens. So I'm thinking that two trailer loads would be sufficient. Plus, we've got a load of wool that we're going to sell anyway. Um, we've got that there. We've got three and six. So that's another full one there. And I got a little bit over here. Yeah, I've, I've essentially got four full pallets right there for wool. So there's another big chunk of money that we got coming in. Plus whatever we get off of the barley right there. I think we're going to do pretty well out of this. Right, that's already at 900 and it's still climbing. I do think we're going to do pretty well out of the barley and the um, other stuff. Anyway, I will see about this tomorrow. We will get that trailer back first thing tomorrow. And then we should also be in a position where we're ready to start selling. We'll fast forward time until the prices have stopped rising. We will sell grain. We will sell wool. And if all has gone well, we will have enough money to buy a new sheep pen which we will put over there somewhere. We may have to cut down some more trees to make room for it, but we'll deal with that when we get to it. So if you've enjoyed this episode, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.